Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One. It's Thursday, January 25th. The year 2018. Keep, keeping it simple for... I guess a few of you like this, so I'm going to, you know, just keep going through the week. Um, keeping it simple. It has a lot to do with focus, I do believe. It's, I did a video on focus... I don't remember how long ago, but the point is, is that there should just be just a few things that you do and you do them over and over and you get good at it and you, and you be, and you're very consistent and you're constant because that's really what you want to do. You want to do something over and over. I think I mentioned it before. It's like a factory worker. You do the same thing day after day, you know minute after minute mind numbing but the thing is the whole goal in trading is just to crank out the profits you know as forex traders we're cranking out the pips i mean but that's it that's the simple thing but somehow some way our human side sometimes it's the emotions it gets the better of us and we go off the rails or we have the shiny object syndrome, you know, the new thing. We get bored looking at, you know, something simple. So we need something more complex. And we just get carried away. And the next thing you know, there's no more profits. Yeah, it's just like with money and risk management. Um, I saw somebody had a little chart. It said, you know, the, um, I guess your psychology was about 60% and the money management was 30% and the system or method or trigger was only 10% of the equation. Now, I don't know if I agree with those ratios 100%, but I think it does represent um, something. I mean, out of the three, yeah, you, you the trader, you yourself, you're the <laughs> definitely biggest part of that equation because that's you know you can control yourself you can you know stop yourself from you know what we call airballing after uh ben whose uh pal talk handle was airball um where you just just put a trade on just because you know there's no reason you just saw something and, and you just click you just got all crazy and clicked you know it had nothing to do with your method we call that airballing well you know, it's just like here, you see something and instead of using your money and risk management, you know, you just put on three lots, you know, and normally you might only put on one lot, but you know, you think you see something and so you just go off the rails and next thing you know, you're staring at a, you know, a substantial loss. Maybe you get lucky and, you know, if you get lucky the first time, that's probably the worst thing that could happen because in your mind, you're reinforcing a bad habit. You're re reinforcing something that's going to be to your detriment in the long term. Because, you see, the funny thing about trading is um, we look at trading as the um, outcome of the trade. Was it profitable? Did How many pips did we make? You know, and the more pips we make, then the better trade we think it is. But that's not really the way you should be um, gauging your trading. Of course, profit is the game, but in your actual trading, you should grade yourself each trade on how you followed the method. Did you follow the method? Did you do your money and risk management? Did you wait for the trigger? You know, did you, you know, do all the things that you think you need to do so you're prepared to pull the trigger at the appropriate time. That's all it is. And see, if you miss one of those, then it doesn't matter if you win or lose. It, you, you messed up. It's just that simple. You, let's just face it. Stare yourself in the mirror and say, you know what? I didn't do that trade properly. I airballed that trade. 
I messed up, you know. I did not follow my plan. That wasn't a good trade. Okay, yes, I made 10 pips, but that really wasn't a good trade. And you just have to be totally honest with yourself. And then hopefully the next time you won't do that. And it's 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 no more than that, guys, traders, people, you know, that is it. And it's it's a hard pill to swallow, it's something hard to do, but if you really want to take your trading, you know, to that next level, to that profitable le level where you where you're consistent day in and day out, well, that's what you're going to have to do. I mean, it's the type of thing where people go, well, geez, why don't I just get an EA and then the EA will do it because it's a computer. Well, yeah, that's true. You could do that. But the thing is, there's so many nuances in there that you may or may not want to put that into an EA. I mean, sometimes you know when to step aside sometimes you know when to jump in and I don't but I mean according to your plan there might be a news event on one day you go you know what I'm not trading that news event too risky doesn't really work for me the next time you said you know what this news event I will trade so a simple example would be um, when the oil news comes out that's when to trade dollar Canadian because, you know, usually the oil news moves the Canadian pairs. But, you know, NFP, you might not be ready or willing to trade NFP. It might just be a little too erratic for you. Or maybe that's the only time you trade because that's when you trade best when things are going like that. So an EA, you could always put those dates and times in there, but it'd be a little cumbersome. So let's just take a look at what the heck's going on here. Um, oh yeah, this was from yesterday. This the simple screen here um, with the uh, new spread dots that I'm working on. So once again, if the uh, the uh, green is the valley of the ask and the red is the peak of the bid, you see one thing that these charts don't do is they really don't show the bid and the ask and I think they may be doing that intentionally and you can see here how these things have been are wiggling back and forth here on the euro um, price is just I guess uh, let's see where is that one chart I think it's right here you can see here how it was wiggling back and forth on that one tick chart and that's why those uh, the green and red dots were moving but you can see here the bid crossed above that valley and now you've got a couple pips in your pocket there if you took that trade so you know I mean just really something simple you know keeping it simple I mean it's like maybe you have a rule you only put one indicator maybe two indicators maybe three on the chart but beyond three maybe it's complex you see here this is price I mean is that yes it's an indicator it's code but the thing is it's just it, it's a gauge it's like on the new cars you get a digital uh, speedometer you get a digital um, odometer and this is kind of what this is I mean it's just telling me how far it closes from the open, how far it is from the high, and how far it is from the low. I call it, a, it's like a GPS. You know, it's telling me the price, the pair, and what time frame I'm on. Is, is that really an indicator? And then we got the three level ZZ with uh, some of the TRO mods. It's telling you you've got a long bias from two bars ago. And so you can see here it told you a long bias and right there price we saw the, the spread dots back here and we saw price move up you know something really simple like that or you know we've got our uh, 
the weekly gap and somebody mentioned that you know sometimes those gaps they're there but the spreads crazy like 15 pips or 20 pips and what do you do well sometimes you just have to wait just wait and if the spread doesn't come down to your liking then you just pass on the trade but you know with the gap sometimes it goes the other way and then the spread narrows and then it starts coming back you know across that open and towards the previous close and now you can get in the gap trade you know maybe you don't get in it right when the market opens maybe it takes you know four or five hours before you can get a decent fill on that trade you know and then something simple here you know we're using a daily chart we're looking at lines from today and yesterday and we just trade according to the uh, daily we, we go with the daily flow right here at the line it was green I mean and you see what happens this is not difficult if that's your trade then the euro's got a hundred and fifty pip range in the euro New Zealand 189 that's the range for today the high the distance between the high and the low so you see here I mean we've got a 48 pip pullback off the high 103 off the low I mean that's that's a move and here we go we see we had a couple positive trades or scratch trades to the downside we had a couple of nice runs to the upside here you know right here maybe this one you got wiggled out maybe you didn't maybe you hung in there and said it didn't break the lower one and then maybe you were lucky enough to get this one and then the rest is history the rat zone here we see it it put in a high came back down you'd be going against the h1 candle color but chances are you saw this rapid movement and probably on the 5 or 15 you had you had greens over here on the multimeter because you see here this is just one system I mean yeah I've got the here's an indicator here's an indicator and yeah the, the rat indicator but I mean you know it, it's pretty simple and some of these you know I put the template name up I put the drain the banks here I got buttons on the bottom the switch you know I've got the little time here so when I post charts you guys can see what time it is you know on the chart compare it to yours you know I've got the B clock over here that's running down and also it's same thing here this is just bigger so depending on what side of the screen I'm looking at there's the info right there but really it's simple it's not complicated and the pivots I mean once again um, you know basically there's just really one indicator on the chart here and there's the open and there's the pivot so maybe you faded but it was going back so you it, you got out of the trade and you can see here it's missed the pivots two days in a row something's got to give um, price action you know red green breaks the high of the green um, simple stuff okay I've got some multimeters over there you guys have seen this yes it's loaded up but you know this is just basically telling me turn trades price action higher highs higher lows lower lows lower highs um, right there in the buttons and then just kind of a history uh, down here of higher highs and higher lows um, don't even really need that here I just have it because I coded it and it's, it's kind of a teaching tool you know the dashboard but here so you can they don't even have to look at the dashboard we just look at here five horizontal lines you, you take the trade at the line with the candle color simple the wick zone simple price doesn't like staying in the wick zone holo zone highest open you trade out back towards the daily open simple okay squigglies oh there you go there's your few seconds of squigglies the uh, HL5 you know kind of becoming the uh, multi-tool type indicator here you can see the rat zone once again and I've shown you the uh, the tick chart before but you know what traders that's it keep it simple and always remember it's not what you trade it's how you trade it the rumpled one signing off to drain the banks